the events that took place in Noah's day foreshadowed the events that are going to take place at the end of time. Uh, history is repeating itself. I'm sure the Lord looks down from heaven now. Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, so will it be in the days of the Son of Man. And we're seeing that in the world today, the, the violence in the land, the selfishness, the self-worship. They weren't paying attention, and they didn't know that the flood was going to come, despite 120 years of preaching. We have the remains of 10,000 or more dinosaurs. It certainly speaks of catastrophe. The earth itself is both a record and a prophecy, warning us of another judgment still to come. But when? The judgment is that which determines who will be ready for Jesus when he comes and who will not. The everlasting gospel and the final judgment and the final choice is linked with the sanctuary message. Then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. It's in Hebrew! It's in Hebrew! <laughs> this prophecy was being fulfilled. It was being announced that the hour of God's judgment had come. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark. The real parallel between the days of Noah and the end of time is found in the moment when the door closed. All had chosen to accept or reject the promise of mercy. Let's look at an exploded view of these last day events. You have to choose between one or the other, so that choice will come. And so our God is a consuming fire. And so the whole purpose is, how can I get man to again stand in my presence without being destroyed, without being consumed? And let them make me a sanctuary, that I may dwell among them. As that angel is flying, it's pointing to the most holy place. God wants to dwell in his people, but he cannot dwell in them while they hold on to sin. And now is the time when people need to prepare to meet their God. God ultimately doesn't want to consume us. He wants to consume sin, but not us. At the end of time, there are three warnings given to man that immediately precede the second coming of Christ. These warnings are given by three angels and have become known as the three angels' messages. And to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment is come. And worship Him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. Now that can only point back to the flood. Saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. Revelation 18 picks it up by saying, come out of her, my people. And with the light from these prophecies, we are able to identify this system called Babylon. In order to go through this period of, of severe trial, God's people have to be sealed. How do we avoid the mark of the beast? By entering in by faith into the most holy place. And that will be the last opportunity for man to reconcile with God. The very fact that Noah sacrificed the lamb, but it was a sign of appealing for redemption. And even though the the earth was imploding during the time of the flood. Uh, he preserved Noah, and he ratified that with a bow of promise. God says that he's going to do that for God's people in the last days. How it must feel not to be on the ark in the face of God's judgment. The story of the ark basically parallels the three angels' messages. It's the message of Noah and it is a message that actually prepares the world for the coming of Christ. Not the flood this time, but the fire of destruction is gonna be on the wicked. So our message is the same thing, get into the ark. So the same message that we have here in the Genesis account must be preached at the end of time as well.